Senator Whitehouse, you are invited uh, to talk me down from my outrage uh, over the recusal issue. Can't do it. Okay. If, uh, if um, the Supreme Court were to decide that President Trump has presidential immunity, then Jack Smith's case would come to an end. And Jack Smith's case could very well, in producing evidence about the insurrection, produce evidence about Justice Thomas's wife, Ginny's role in that insurrection including correspondence directly with the defendants, Trump's chief of staff. So there's a very direct conflict of interest. If he can help get rid of the case, he can protect his wife from the scrutiny of having her actions be evidence for the prosecution. So that's pretty blunt. I would say that there's an even worse outrage behind that which is that even now, we do not know what the facts are here. There is no other officer in the entire United States government who, when an ethics question is raised, doesn't have the facts about what took place found by some independent entity. It is only these nine justices who rever reserve for themselves the right to say, here's what I say the facts are, and nobody else gets another view. And Justice Thomas has simply refused to disclose what he knew and when he knew it about his wife's insurrection activities. And that has tainted a number of Supreme Court cases already. So it's a double trouble problem, an immediate conflict in this case, and a signal of this larger problem of the court not pl playing by the rules of rule of law. So the, what I just read is a law. It's it's not it's, some, it's not some rule that someone created. No, it's that, not some court rule. It's not some judicial principle. It's the law of the land of the United States of America. And how is that law enforced? Well, by courts. And of course, at this point, you've got a court that doesn't want to have that law enforced on itself. And the very basic sort of opening bid of any law enforcement effort of any contest of law is that you find out what the facts are. Fact finding is elemental to a decision to go forward on an ethics matter, on a recusal matter, in a civil case, in a criminal case. It's across the board. So it's extremely peculiar that this Supreme Court will not allow fact finding as to its own ethics problems. So uh, we know that in the last hour, uh, Virginia Thomas was watching her hero on Fox talk about this very case that her husband is considering, uh, maybe with her husband sitting beside her. Let's listen to what uh, Clarence Thomas's wife was listening to uh, and Donald Trump arguing his own case on Fox in the last hour. They have to do the immunity thing, because if you don't, a president will not be able to be a president. If you're going to make a big decision as president and you're afraid that as soon as you get out, you're going to be indicted by the opposition party, by the Democrats, by the radical left lunatics who will indict you and try and put you in prison because you're trying to do something good for the country. Even if it's severe, the severe may be a great thing for the country. They have to have presidential immunity. If you don't have immunity for a president, and I'm not talking about only me, if you don't have immunity for a president, you're going to, you will not be able to function properly. Uh, and so, uh, I don't know, does, does Mrs. Thomas uh, turn to her favorite Supreme Court justice and say, what do you think after that? Well, I, she has a term that she refers to her husband with. I, I think my best friend is the way they often describe each other. And she actually talks about talking with her best friend in the communications that went back and forth between her and the defendant, Trump's uh, chief of staff. So you could actually even go beyond just having Ginny Thomas figure in the evidence in the case presuming that Clarence Thomas is the best friend that she mentions, he could actually appear in the case. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And just by the way, the president's commentary is complete nonsense. We've had, you know, a lot of United States presidents. Uh, they have never been charged criminally. The one who came closest was President Nixon. He did not concede that the criminal law did not apply to him. He conceded that it did apply to him. 
throughout the entire history of the United States of America, there's never been a problem of a president not being able to do something lawful that he should be doing for the people of the United States because of fear of criminal prosecution. This is an imaginary uh, figment of Donald Trump's.